special triangles. Okay, so what it's saying is, and this one's the easiest to remember, the special triangle. So the idea is that we would memorize this triangle. Um, this one is the easiest because in a right triangle, if we have 90 degrees here, and we're trying to remember the, the exact value for 45, sine 45, cos 45, or tan 45, 45 is easy because uh, it's we've got one, one. These angles are the same. The opposite sides have got to be the same, right? It's got to be an isosceles triangle. And then with our Pythagorean theorem, this has got to be root two. So one squared is one, one squared is one, one plus one is two, square root is root two. So that's how this, this one was easy to remember. So if we wanted sine 45, we could pick either angle. Here's angle 45. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is one over root two. So instead of doing it on my calculator and getting a decimal, I can use this and I have an exact value if I need the exact value. If you don't need the exact value, you just do it on your calculator. Cos 45 is the same thing. Here's 45. The adjacent is 1. The hypotenuse is root 2. 1 over root 2. That's not a 7. By accident I touched the thing first. 1 over root 2. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so this is just one. And all these you can check. For example, if I pull my calculator up, I guess the only one that we really could check would be tan 45. Um, tan 45, we should get one, right? There we go, we got one. We could do um, sine 45. And we get this weird 707. Let's check if that's the right, same thing. 1 divided by root 2 equals, there we go. So these are the same thing. That's all a special triangle is, is it's giving us the exact value. Instead of, because if we were doing a question and we needed to do sine 45, we would have to round that. We'd probably say, 0.71. If we wanted the, the exact value and not lose any information, we could put 1 over root 2. Okay, that's all it is. There's a uh, same thing for these ones. Uh, 30 and 60. Uh, so if we looked at, for example, 30 first, here is my angle. So the, the way to remember these two is I always remember that the one, the, both of them start with a one, right? 45 across from it is a one, across from it is a one, because it's the same angle, root two. That one's easy. This one definitely has a one in it as well. One, two, three. You just gotta remember which one's bigger. So one is the smallest, you can check if you do root three, it looks the biggest because it has a three in it, but it's actually smaller than two. So you do root three on your calculator. You see that that's the second biggest. You put it with the 60. The two goes with the 90. So sine of this, the opposite side is one. The hypotenuse is two. We could check that on our calculator. Sine 30 should give us 0 0.5. That doesn't lose any information either. That's an exact value. Um, cos 30. Cos would be adjacent. So this one we would lose if we did a decimal. Root 3 over 2. That root 3 is going to lose some information because we'd have to round that. Tan 30. Same with this one. Opposite over adjacent that root three, we're gonna lose some information. So whenever we get something with a 30 in it, if we can remember this special triangle, 
if we're out in the wild and uh, we lost our calculator and we stumbled upon a question that has an angle of 30 or 60 or 45 and we needed to figure out the ratio uh, of what that was, the, the ratio of the sides, we could just do it with a special triangle. We wouldn't need a calculator. We wouldn't be in that, in that much trouble. So in that situation, we'd be fine. Now, ignoring this one, so this is no longer our side because now we're gonna do 60 over here. 60, I like marking it, 60 is my angle. Uh, opposite over hypotenuse is root three over two. I've lost no information right here. Uh, cos 60, one over two. So this one we can check. If we type cos 60 into our calculator, we should get 0 0.5. And tan 60 is root three over one. Or just root three. I'll put over one though. That's our special triangles. We can use those to help us solve and get exact values. So if you see a question, usually what happens is you'll get a question where it'll say use exact values and it will be referring to the special uh, triangle stuff. One time I think there was a question on it and it said use exact values and it was cos 60 and I put 0 0.5 and I think my teacher at the time marked it wrong because I didn't use special triangles, but 0 0.5 is also an exact value. We're not losing any information there. So, a couple other things about these. In the book, it's going to start talking about, uh, uh, I guess we're, we're creating angles on the XY plane. Okay, and dealing with, we've, we've done a little bit of that, uh, uh, some trig on the XY plane. Now, whenever it gives us a positive angle, the, this there's a couple actually things here. Uh, if we're given a, t uh, we want to create a terminal arm at an angle of 50 degrees. If it says that, there's an example of it up there. We always are gonna start. Here's our here's our x-axis. Here's our y-axis. We're always gonna start down here on the x. And we're gonna go, as it says here, counterclockwise. So if it says an angle of 50, there is our angle of 50. Okay? If it says, for example, 320, we're starting here on our x axis, we're going counterclockwise, 320. So if we went all the way around, we would have gone 360. If we went this far here, we would have gone 90. 180, 270. These are going to be important values coming up. The 90, 180, 270, 360. And you could keep going around and around and around as well. So you could keep going and make that angle bigger and bigger. Okay? A negative angle. If we if it if it said, the question said negative 50 degrees, you'd start at the same spot and you'd just go the other way. So you'd be going down as seen there. You'd start on the x-axis, it'd be going down 50 degrees. Negative 200, again, all the way around. Negative 360, we'd be all the way back where we started, but it would be a full angle all the way around. Okay, so there's a positive angle and a negative angle to a terminal arm. Okay, it sounds like some people are having fun upstairs. Um, okay, a principal angle um, and coterminal. So a principal angle is, is um, if we had, for example, um, where's my pen? Well, if I did, holy smokes, four, 545. Okay, so angle 545 is gonna, we're starting here, right? We're going around this way. There's 90, there's 180, there's 270 all the way around. 
Then we're coming, we're at 360. So we've already gone around once, right? 90, 180, 270, 360. But this one's 545. So then we got to do 360 plus 90. So let's do 545. Oops, actually, I'll do it on my calculator on here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do 540. Oops, I got to turn it on first. 545 minus 360, because I've gone around once, is 185. So I got to go, I, 360 gets me back to here. Now I've got to go around 185. So if I go around to here, that's 180. And 185 is here. Somewhere there. I don't know. This is 5 degrees in here. That right there. So what I've done is I've gone here, around. I'm still going. I'm coming back around to here. That is 545 degrees. It's one full time around and a little bit more than half. Okay, there, that is, I've drawn 545 degrees. The principal angle between zero and 360, uh, once around is a circle, right? Once we start going around a second time, I drew it a little bit above on the picture there, but really it's just going over the same thing and it's going to end up at the same spot. So we're always interested in this area between 0 and 360. And maybe I'll scare you a little bit and whoops, and uh, show you also. Um, we're interested in it also because you probably heard last year a little bit about uh, period and looked at uh, the sine and cosine, maybe just sine graphs, and they look like this between 0 and 360. And um, what's interesting about these is the, the, it repeats after 360. So we're mainly interested in that part. I'll get a little bit more into it um, in an upcoming question. But we're interested in where this angle would be between 0 and 360. So I've already actually calculated it up on the screen there. So between here and here is 185 degrees. Uh, Coterminal is another interesting one. That is two angles that share the same arm. So 545 degrees and 185 degrees would be coterminal. They share that same ray or uh, uh, line the, the, off that uh, initial angle there. I, a ray, I think, for the for the, uh, uh, not thinking of a better term off the top of my head. So terminal arm, terminal arm. Uh, that's why they're coterminal. They're on that terminal arm. So. 545 uh, and 185. 185 would be the principal angle that is coterminal to that uh, 545 degree angle. Let's see what else they got. Uh, there we go. Co <laughs> I, this slide should have been the other uh, ahead of the other one, so I wouldn't be struggling as much with those definitions. Coterminal angles are angles that share the same terminal arm. So in this one. It's got uh, 415, which is going, oh, I went yellow for some reason. Uh, 415, which is going all the way around, is the same as 55. And you can also cheat. I like cheating when they do these questions. Is You just go the opposite way. That is coterminal, and it would share the same terminal arm. Also, it shows on there. Um, so, for example, here, whoops. To start, it started here, it went around, it went around, it's still going around, and it said that is 415 degrees. 
Well, if I just started here and went to there, that's 55 degrees. Those two are coterminal. They share that same terminal arm. Well, it came up with another one. If I do a negative angle and go backwards, so do 360 minus that 55, 305 is also coterminal. That's what I like using when it asks me for coterminal stuff. It's uh, a lot quicker and easier. Oh. Okay, related acute angles. So whenever we get a, um, whenever we get a, a, a terminal arm with an angle, for example, this one is 135 degrees. There are also there are always and these angles. Uh, I don't. Someone figured out how cool these angles are, and they've got some neat properties with them. These are related acute angles. Always the angle that is formed between the horizontal axis, that's key, horizontal axis, and the terminal arm, is the related acute angle. So if this is 135, we do 180 minus 135, and that gets us the 45 degrees. That is our related acute angle, that 45. Now what's different is we can't say that that's a formula on how to calculate our related acute angle because in this case over here, uh, 250 is past that. So in this one, instead of 180 minus the angle, this time we got to do 250 minus the 180. So we got to think a little bit to figure out because that related acute angle is always against the horizontal, we got to think a little bit to figure out what that related acute angle is. So if it was all the way over here, if we had another one that was something like this, we're going all the way around. This is 270. Let's say we'll go 300. So this is 300 degrees. The related acute angle is in here. We know that the whole way is 360, so we got to do 360 minus 300. The related acute angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so we got to think a little bit. Oop, it was hidden in behind there. Let me just hide my calculator for a second. And show that depending upon what quadrant it's in, our angle, which maybe I should mention that too. It might have been a while since we've done that. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Depending upon what quadrant the uh, primary angle is in, the related acute angle you got to figure out just based upon some of these key things of this being 180, this being 360. We know this is 90 and 270. And these are key points also for those periodic kind of graphs that we'll be doing next unit, which aren't too bad. So if you, if you don't like those, don't worry too much. Okay, so that's a related acute angle, which is important. Okay, we already did coterminal uh that say, share the same terminal arm so let's do one here well, we may as well um 110 so this is 180 over here here's 90 so it's somewhere up here 110 coterminal angles uh angles that share the same terminal arm so an easy way is to go 360 minus 110 Get my calculator back up here. Oops, got to turn it on. 360 minus 110 gets me 250. So negative 250 is a coterminal angle. Okay, that was pretty quick. Illustrate related acute angles. Okay, maybe I won't 
calculate them, but I'll show you where they will be. Um, I'll calculate a few. 120 would be somewhere over here, right? Not quite, it's past 90, not quite at 180. So it's somewhere in this quadrant anyways. Here's my 120. If I did 180 minus 120, that is going to be my related acute angle. So this one is going to be 60. Okay, if I do the next one, um, 245, it's past 180, it's not at 270, so it's somewhere in here. So 245. Now the related acute angle is always against the horizontal, so in this one I have to do 245 minus 180. Let me do that. 245 minus 180 is 65. This is 65. Okay? These are these angles are important because maybe for the next one let's do let me let me call one up here. Um let me call up let's do so I don't know if you can see what is on the screen there uh, I'll try and zoom in a little bit if we look at these so maybe down here on this one that we can still see. I'm going to draw 150. So 150 is not quite at uh, 180 here. So here's 150, 150 degrees. Now if we look at the related acute, so if we do 180 minus 150, we're going to get 30 degrees. And what's interesting about this, and we still got to learn another thing in order to get all of it, but if we look, 30 degrees is at 0 0.5. Um, I don't know if I can get that even closer. So I've zoomed in kind of on that arc of the sine curve. Uh, 30 degrees is at 0 0.5. That's our related acute angle. If we look at the primary angle, 150, that is also at 0 0.5, which is kind of cool. So there's a relationship between these primary angles and the related acute angles that uh, we're going to explore coming up uh, a little bit. We get into it a just a little bit.